Hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about public network IPv4 over SRV6BE scenarios, in which SRV6BE is used to carry public network IPv4 services. As IPv4 addresses are exhausted, IPv4 to IPv6 evolution is inevitable for network development. Because there are a large number of IPv4 users and devices on the network, IPv4 and IPv6 coexist during the evolution. Against this backdrop, how do we implement mutual access of applications and achieve smooth evolution during the coexistence period of IPv4 and IPv6? For example, if the IP backbone network is upgraded to IPv6, but the edge network still runs IPv4, how are IPv4 services carried over the IPv6 network? To achieve this, we can deploy public network IPv4 over SRV6BE. Let's take a network with five devices as an example to describe public network IPv4 over SRV6BE. In this example, PE1, the P, and PE2 all belong to AS100. It's required that a bidirectional SRV6BE path be established between P1 and P2 to carry public network IPv4 services. The configuration roadmap for this scenario is as follows. First, enable ISIS on P1, the P, and the P2, and deploy basic routes. Second, configure an SRV6BE path between P1 and P2. Third, configure a BGP IPv4 unicast peer relationship between P1 and P2 to transmit routes between R1 and R2. To facilitate understanding, we'll obtain packet headers on this interface later. First, let's look at ISIS configurations. In SRV6BE scenarios, ISIS configurations are almost the same. They mainly include global and uh, interface-specific configurations. During interface-specific ISIS configuration, you are advised to enable ISIS IPv6 on the loopback interfaces of P1 and P2 to ensure that the loopback interfaces can communicate with each other. The loopback interfaces can also be used to establish a BGP IPv4 unicast peer relationship later. After completing basic ISIS configuration, check the PIS ISIS routing tables. Taking P1 as an example, we can see that its ISIS routing table contains three loopback interface destined routes and two subnet routes. Next, configure SRV6 on P1 and P2. The configuration process mainly covers enabling SRV6 globally and configuring a source address for IPv6 packet encapsulation. After completing global SRV6 configuration, you need to run this command to enable ISIS to advertise locator routes. In SRV6BE scenarios, AND and AND.X seeds, which are used to represent paths, are not used. Therefore, you can disable dynamic seed generation to save device resources. After SRV6BE is configured, it is advertised SRV6 information through LSPs. We can see that the SRV6 locator TLV carries locator information. After SRV6BE configuration is completed, ISIS updates the LSDB and then uses the SPF algorithm to calculate routes. Check the ISIS routing table on P1. The command output shows that two locator routes exist in the ISIS routing table. They correspond to the locator information configured on P1 and P2. According to the ISIS routing table on the P, we can see that the P has also learned the two locator routes, even though SRV6 is not configured on it. As such, 
The P can also properly forward SRV6 packets after receiving them. Now, all SRV6BE configuration are completed. Next, let's see how to configure BGP. We should first configure eBGP peer relationships uh, in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family view for root advertisement between P1 and R1, as well as between P2 and R2. After completing the configuration, run the opcode and DT4 command to configure an SRV6 and .dt4 seed. This operation is optional. You can also use an ant.dt4 seed dynamically allocated by BGP. After an ant.dt4 seed is configured, it's added to the local seed table. Uh, in the local seed tables on P1 and P2, we can see that the ant.dt4 seeds are bound to the public network instances. An um, nant.dt4 seed consists of a locator and an opcode. The locator can direct packets to a specified PE in the SRV6 domain, and the opcode is used to associate the PE with the corresponding public network instance. Uh, next, let's see how to establish a BGP IPv4 unicast peer relationship between the PEs. This requires several key steps to be performed in the BGP IPv4 unicast address family view. The first step is to add seeds to the BGP IPv4 routes to be advertised. If no manually configured seed exists, a dynamically allocated one can be used. The second step is to enable SRV6BE recursion. The third step is to enable the current device to exchange routes with the BGP IPv4 unicast peer with a specified IPv6 address. The fourth step is to enable the current device to exchange prefix seeds carried by public network IPv4 routes with the specified IPv6 peer. Here, the prefix seed is the end.dt4 seed previously mentioned. After the configurations mentioned earlier are completed, the devices exchange open messages to establish a BGP peer relationship and use keep alive messages to maintain it. After a BGP IPv4 unicast peer relationship is established, the PEs exchange update messages carrying path information and an LRI. Next, let's look at the BGP update message format. Update messages carry multiple path attributes, such as the BGP prefix seed, which is an end.dt4 seed configured on PE2. Moving on, let's look at an LRI. The address family identifier is uh, IPv4, and the subsequent address family identifier is unicast. The next hope of the root is a loopback interface address belonging to PE2. The root prefix is the root prefix sent from R2. Now let's have a look at the BGP IPv4 routing table on PE1. Uh, we can see that the next hope of the root sent from R2 is the rootback interface address of PE2. Root details show the prefix seed carried by the root. The seed is actually the end.dt4 seed of the public network instance on PE2. The preferred BGP root enters the IP routing table. Therefore, we can also see the root of R2 in the IP routing table. According to the displayed information, the root has successfully recursed to an SRV6B pass. In addition, the next hope of the root has been changed to the end.dt4 seed configured on PE2. SRV6BE is displayed as the outbound interface. The BGP root on PE1 is sent to R1 through the peer relationship. Therefore, the BGP routing table on R1 contains this root.
The preferred BGP route on R1 enters the IP routing table. Therefore, uh, the IP routing table on R1 contains this route. If we ping R2 from R1, we can find that the ping is successful. This indicates that the configuration is successful. That's all about the implementation of public network IPv4 over SRv6BE in the control plane. Next, let's look at the packet forwarding process. Let's ping R2 from R1 to simulate packet encapsulation. This example assumes that a packet is sent from R1 and then encapsulated on PE1. The packet sent from R1 is an ICMP request for which IPv4 encapsulation is performed on R1. After receiving the packet, PE1 performs SRv6 encapsulation, encapsulating the post recursion next hope address as the destination address. The next hope address is actually the end.dt4 seed configured on P2. The packet information displayed on the right side shows R2's ICMP reply packet, whose encapsulation format is similar to that of the ICMP request packet. Finally, let's summarize the root advertisement and data forwarding process in a public network IPv4 over SRv6BE scenario. Taking root advertisement from R1 to R2 as an example, the advertisement process mainly consists of three steps. First, IPv4 root advertisement from R1 to PE1 through the eBGP peer relationship. Second, public network IPv4 root advertisement from P1 to P2 through the BGP IPv4 unicast peer relationship. Third, IPv4 root advertisement from P2 to R2 through the eBGP peer relationship. After that, uh, let's look at the data forwarding process. Taking data forwarding from R1 to R2 as an example, the forwarding process mainly consists of the following steps. First, the original IPv4 packet is sent to PE1 through a specified interface. Second, PE1 searches the public network IPv4 routing table according to the IPv4 destination address in the packet and finds the associated next hope information. Third, the P searches the public network IPv6 routing table according to the outer destination address for packet forwarding. Fourth, PE2 searches the local seed table according to the outer destination address and finds a matching end.dt4 seed. Then, PE2 removes the IPv6 header finds a public network instance matching the end.dt4 seed, and searches the public network IPv4 routing table for packet forwarding. That's all for this course on public network IPv4 over SRv6BE. Thank you for watching.